This is the WASH Academia series, a VIPCG program dedicated to the development of the WASH sector. I am Vicky Idoko Pope, CEO of VIPCG. I will be your anchor for this segment. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. As I said earlier, I am the CEO of VIPCG. VIPCG is an institutional and organizational development consulting firm based in Abuja, Nigeria. We have affiliates in the US and the UK. VIPCG was originally set up in the USA in 1999. I am a veteran consultant with over 25 years experience in institutional and organizational development consulting. I have a master's degree in organization development from American University in Washington, D.C. We're going to be talking about project monitoring and supervision. This is a critical aspect of project management. It is crit critical because the success of every project depends on effective monitoring and supervision. Come with me as we build knowledge and explore different ways to, to ensure that we do project monitoring and supervision right. Project monitoring and supervision is central to project success. It is a quality assurance strategy for project performance. It helps us to ascertain the progress of the project. It helps us to ensure that every project activity, all tasks are executed as designed. And if there are any uh, deviations from the original plan and any risks that have arisen during the implementation of the project, they are pinpointed and brought out during monitoring and supervision. It is based on whatever we find during the monitoring and supervision processes that we are able to develop um, strategies for tackling the challenges that are hindering the performance of the project. For this reason, Every project should have a monitoring and supervision plan in place covering every aspect of the project, starting from inception to completion. And so what can PMS or Project Monitoring and Supervision do for your project? Let's look at it a little bit more closely. Monitoring and supervision can help you to track the progress of your project in real time. It can tell you what the successes are, what the outputs are, what the impact is, and whatever the challenges that you are um, confronting on the project. And it can help you look at how to address these challenges so that the project can uh, move to success in real time as it is running. So when you engage in project monitoring and supervision, you are not trying to police the project to see whether it is failing or succeeding. You are trying to see whether this project is running as designed so that if there are any issues, you come up with uh, mitigation uh, plans and you come up with um, corrective actions that can then bring you back on track so that you can achieve what the project was set up to achieve. We know that um, when you are doing caring, when a project is designed and now you, uh, you have a, a project a monitoring and supervision plan in place, somebody has to do it. So let's first of all look at the uh, parties that are involved in uh, project monitoring and supervision. There are 
two clear parties in every project. There's the founder and there is the implementer. You know, sometimes the founder is the implementer, but there are people who are clearly dedicated to the implementation of the project. Both parties are involved in the project monitoring and supervision, but we're not going to be talking about project monitoring and supervision from the perspective of the funder. This presentation is going to focus on monitoring and supervision as carried out by the implementer. The implementation team comprises the um, contractors, or the consultants who are given tasks or specific parts of the project to implement. Then that is the project monitoring, um, the project um, uh, management office, who comprise of the project, uh, uh, the project team, which comprises of either the coordinator or the manager, and you have the procurement people, the technical. Uh, advisor or the technical supervisor of the project, then you have finance and audit and communications people, and then you have all those people comprising the team uh, that are set up to, to work to make the project come alive and deliver the results that it was set up to be. So these two groups of people are involved in uh, the people who are involved in project monitoring and supervision. Again, as I was saying, we are focusing on project monitoring and supervision from the perspective of the implementer. And in this case, for the implementer is the project management team and the contractors who are engaged or involved in delivering the project. The implementer must approach it this way, preventive monitoring and value engineering. These two items are critical to the success of the project because we want to make sure that we uh, take steps to prevent the project failing before the actual events, not afterwards. And value engineering means that the activities will be implemented in such a way that they will deliver the results for which the activities were designed. This will cover every single task of the project. The implementer must lay out the monitoring system to be employed in detail in respect of both their own work production and the suppliers uh, and contractors as well. What this will do is that all parties that are involved in monitoring and supervision know what they are going to do beforehand and do what they are going to do while they sh when they should be doing it. It's the only way that we can guarantee that outputs will, will come out the way that they were designed to be. We're going to now look at different ways that uh, the different parties that are involved from the implementers team. The first, uh, the first set of parties that we need to look at are the contractors or the consultants who are engaged because of their technical expertise uh, to produce work on that the project. They are given specific tasks to, uh, to produce work in aid of the performance of the project. And then we want to then look at the project management team. We look at the technical officers that are involved in the project management team, and then we'll look at specifically the project coordinator and the project manager. So what should the contractor or the consultant who is engaged in delivering certain technical aspects of the project, like say, if they were contracted to lay distribution pipes, what should they be doing? 
in, in, in relation to performance monitoring and supervision. First of all, they should be prepared to submit progress reports as agreed to the technical advisor or the technical um, supervisor, such as the engineer. That report should contain the milestones, uh, planned activities, the actual activities that were carried out, uh, the achievements under that milestone, any issues and challenges that they encountered, if there are any uh, risks that arose during implementation and what they need to do or what has been done to address challenges or what they plan to do to address uh, such challenges, then def definitely one of the key areas that they must detail is resource utilization. What kind of quality and quantity of resources, materials, people, time, and all of that that was used during implementation? This is critical because it provides an insight in terms of how they are implementing and what progress has actually been made. And all of that is detailed in the report that they will draft and submit to the technical supervisor. The summary of the plans of the next milestone that they must include in this um, report should include what is the work that they are going to do following this current milestone? What are the processes of that work? What are the uh, resources that are going to be consumed from, from that work? If there is any uh, amount of any kind of work that is being carried forward or being carried over from the previous milestone to this one, it should be detailed and the reasons why this work is being moved into the, the, the uh, upcoming milestone should also be stated. So um, the other thing is that the, he should also list uh, all the records that is needed for the review. He should list it and prepare those records and have them ready for the uh, technical person that will be coming for the uh, performance monitoring or for the monitoring of the, uh, of the project. And will list every single site where the project um, uh, uh, monitor will have to go to to uh, to look at what the work is that is going on so because when the project monitor comes he's going to not only look at the reports he has to go and look at the physical sites as well and the contractor should have all this information ready before um, and provided in the report before the project monitor shows up Now, I want to talk a little bit about the supervising engineer or the supervising technician. Every project will have within the project management team somebody or a group of people whose job it is, who are the technical experts, who will have oversight over the work of the contractor or the consultant that is working on the project. These people, their role is critical because they are the eyes and ears of the implementer. And they are the ones who will make sure that the implementer delivers to the, the funding partners what was contracted in the agreement. So what is it that they should be doing in project monitoring and supervision? That is what we're going to be talking about now. They must ensure that all progress reports are submitted as when due by the contractor. Why is this important? We found in a lot of work that we have uh, uh, done with project management or, or doing evaluations that 
so many reports that are supposed to be submitted sometimes are months behind. That doesn't help at all with project monitoring and supervision because that is after the fact. We spoke earlier about preventive monitoring. You cannot prevent anything if the reports are submitted late. So he must ensure or the, the parties that are involved uh, that are technical advisors to the project or technical supervisors to the assignments must make sure that all reports are submitted on time. They must be prepared to carry out all scheduled monitoring and supervision. Don't ever assume that you know enough about what is um, going on in the field that you start to skip monitoring schedules that you are um, uh, monitoring visits that you are supposed to go to every single schedule that is in the project monitoring and supervision plan must be adhered to you have to adhere to uh to the project itself has to adhere to uh the project plans and the milestones and all of that so the technical advisor or the technical superv supervisor must review the project plans before he goes on a supervision visit. So look at the plans, look at the milestones, look at the risks, look at what should be produced. Look at that even if you think you know it already. Go back and review it with the team of supervisors if you have a team or, or if it's just you review this so that you know this like the back of your hand so that when you go to to the site and you are now given the documents that you are now reviewing or looking at the sites and looking at it you already know what you should be looking for and then you must okay this is definitely important most supervisors go on the basis of what was contracted with the contractor and what the plan says but this is one of the soft sides of project monitoring and supervision you must know how the contractor works every contractor no matter what they have written down uh, as their approach their technical approach and implementation plan have a soft side of how they work the surprises often come when, when you have not yet learned your contractor. Study your contractor so that you will know how he approaches work, how he manages his people, how he gets productivity out of the people. What is the mental construct around um, quality? How do they determine what is the quality of material that is enough to get the work done? You have to spend time studying your contractor or your consultant so that you will not be blindsided when you start your supervision activities. You have to pre-notify the contractor about all scheduled visits because they too need to prepare before you come, before you come, and so they can help you succeed as you are uh, doing your own job. Um, you and remember this: you are not the police or the detective of the project. Your role in monitoring and supervising the project is so that the contractor can do the right things so that you can address the challenges as they arise so that the project can deliver the results that are needed. Carry out all scheduled and ins inspection visits as they are planned. I have spoken about the importance of that. Let us not be skipping any of the schedules because we can let things fall through the cracks if you begin to uh, economize on efforts to manage or to, to manage your supervision visits. Note that the progress of the assignment, you don't know that the definition of the progress of the assignment is also 
uh, important because contractors can tell you things like we've gone 50% of the way and then you go and prepare your report that says you've gone 60% of the way. What specifically constitutes 60% in terms of quality, quantity of output and timeliness? You have to have an agreement or an understanding with the contractor that when we say the project is 50% or 60%, this is what we mean. And that that matches what is in the agreement. You have to certify that all planning up, all planned output for the milestones are being achieved as they are, as they were planned. What this means is that it is on you to put your signature down to certify that what you say you saw is in fact what is. So you have to attempt to rescue all challenges so that whatever it is that you have written down as what is happening, whatever it is that you have ascertained as to the performance of the project, if in fact is the performance of the project. And if there are any challenges, do not try to uh, cover them up because we, we want to present uh, a good face to, uh, to, to, to the funder, you know, because we want them to see that the project is doing well. So we would sometimes understate uh, the challenges or the risks that we're dealing with. It is better to bring them to the fore so that the funder can see where they can help you. They too want to help you to be successful. So bring up your challenges, bring up the risks, bring up where you are uh, having issues so that the funder can help you, so that both the contractor, the funder and you can put your heads together to address the risks that you're dealing with, wherever the glitches are, so the project can go over the hump and begin to perform. The implementer's project management team is usually headed by either the project manager or the project coordinator. This team reports to the project manager or project coordinator to either the supervising um, uh, agency, if it's a government project, or uh, if it is a funded project by, uh, by an NGO or by foundation to whoever the technical, technical team. They also report to the funding team, the technical team of the funders. So we want to look a little bit more closely about the role of the project manager or the coordinator in project monitoring and supervision, having now addressed the contractor and the consultant as well as the technical team. Well, the coordinator or the project manager bears full responsibility for the performance of the project. So he must be aware of the progress of the project at all times. And it is true project monitoring and supervision that he gets that done. He bears full responsibility for addressing deviations from the plan. And it's through project monitoring and supervision that deviations are brought out and dealt with. So he again must have a handle on all deviations that have occurred and must not be blindsided when uh, periodic evaluations come up and then there are deviations that he had not yet either addressed or brought up to be dealt with. Therefore, he must review, he or she of course, must review all status reports and prepare global project progress report periodically with all the achievements and all the challenges, all the deviations, all the remedial actions that have been put in place to address these deviations. He must lead the monitoring and supervision missions 
to the sub projects or the tasks that have been contracted out. And he must do that on schedule. He must, the, he must lead the formalization of all corrective actions that have been agreed to be put in place to address deviations or issues and challenges. He must take charge of risk management as they occur. So the role of the project manager or, or, or um, the, the coordinator in project uh, monitoring and supervision is an active role. He cannot just sit in his office and collect reports and rely on just the technical team to do their work. He must do um, active supervision. He must carry out active supervision and control of the work of the technical team who are doing real-time supervision of the project as it's been implemented. So we have covered quite a few things about um, project monitoring and supervision. There's a whole lot more that we can do, but right now I would like for us to quickly look at when is performance monitoring or project monitoring and supervision carried out? When should you do this? Well, project monitoring and supervision is carried out throughout the project's life cycle. That is from inception to completion. While the project is being planned, we're making plans for monitoring and supervision. Once the inception starts, we immediately put the plans into play. And throughout the, um, the running of the project to completion, we are carrying out periodic or scheduled uh, monitoring and supervision activities. And even at the end, when the evaluation is happening, um, the monitoring and supervision even has a role at this point because the monitoring and supervision uh, reports will form an integral part of the final evaluation reports of the project. Um, we have spoken at length at uh, about project monitoring and supervision but i want to stress that the adequacy the effectiveness of the monitoring and supervision activities is what brings value to the delivery of the project itself so as we go on to the project let us not um, think that this is something that the implementer that the implementer does because it's a requirement by the funder. It is something that the implementer does because this is the only way that he can guarantee the success of the project. From when the uh, technical advisors look at the technical aspects of, uh, of, uh, of uh, various assignments, that are going to be carried out and helps with this selection of contractors and consultants to deliver the assignments to when the contractor starts to work and the technical team uh, begins to work with the contractor to make sure that results are being achieved as designed and that challenges are being uh, uh, addressed and that deviations are being brought up to the front and if they need to be uh, sent to the, uh, the, the, the funder to address that he helps with the project coordinator or manager to bring this to the attention of the funder. It is critical. It is critical that you understand that if your job or your role, whatever your role is in project mon monitoring and supervision, that you do this right. This video is not enough time for us to cover everything in project monitoring and supervision. We have never not covered tools and strategies. We have not covered specific processes for doing it. We have not covered the use of technology. We have not covered so many things. So we are putting together, we are putting together 
a training program, a four-day training program on effective project monitoring and supervision that has started running already. And this program is being facilitated by, facilitated by me and veterans of the World Bank and the African Development Bank. We would like very much for you to be a part of this program. I thank you for listening. I thank you for paying attention. I thank you for watching the video. And I hope to see you at the program. I am going to now give you information about how you can bring this program to your organization. I can, I'm going to be telling you about how you can also participate as an individual in a group program that we are running. It is a four day program that is focused on effective performance, I mean effective um, project monitoring and supervision. You can visit www.washacademia, washacademia.com or you can call us at 0906-486-230. So you want to register or bring this project to your, this training program to your organization, visit www.washacademia.com. It's one word, wash, W-A-S-H-A-C-A-D-E, m i a dot com we have got several phone numbers that are coming on the screen that you can call zero nine zero six one four eight six two three zero zero eight one three six zero nine nine one nine nine zero eight one three six zero nine nine one nine nine or zero eight zero six 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 five three eight seven five zero eight six 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 five three eight seven five. Attending this program will bring a lot to your attention. We guarantee that it will supercharge how you do performance uh, project monitoring supervision on your project or in your organization. We hope to see you there. Again, my name is Vicky Idoko Pope. I am the CEO of the IPCG and I thank you for watching and listening.